Babyface Ray was born in 1993 in Detroit. He is a rapper that has steadily risen to prominence within the modern hip hop scene. Babyface Ray began gaining traction in the early 2010s with mixtapes that showcased his cool, understated style. His sound blends traditional Detroit rap influences with a more melodic, relaxed approach, setting him apart from many of his peers. He became widely recognized following his 2021 breakout project, Unfaguitable, which included collaborations with prominent artists such as Money Baguio and Cash Doll. Okay, so having introduced the artist, let's go straight to the album. Today I'm going to be reviewing his first studio album, which was released the 13th September 2024. This album is 58 minutes long and it features Boss Mandelo, um, G Herbo and V's amongst others. Okay, so let's dive into the, the review. Um, so first off, we start with the opener, Goofies on Goofies. Now this isn't a track that's gonna blow your mind or anything, it's a decent song I would say. Nothing too overwhelming for the intro, and it kind of eases you in into the, the into the album. Um, it's not at a high level at all, but I mean, it's also not a bad start. Um, it's just a song that I mean, just there, you know. Um, then we get hit with Count Money featuring Boss Mandilo. Um, I'll be honest, this one gets pretty repetitive after a while. It's got a decent vibe, but the feature doesn't really bring anything special to the table, like. I didn't hate it, but I wasn't hyped either with um, this song. Now, um, Rubber Band Man, I'm just gonna say it, I didn't like this one at all. Um, it felt way too predictable and the amount of repetition in the lyrics and the beat, um, they just didn't hit for me. Um, definitely one of the weaker tracks of the album. Next up we've got Shy Kid, um, which is a step up from Rubber Band Man, but still kinda low level. Uh, it's better mixed, on this, the, but but still, I mean, the flows are too predictable. Um, there's nothing that really grabs you. Um, like, you're waiting for it to do something special and it just never does in the whole song. And then we hit I Need Some Motivation and okay, um, this was a clear improvement. Uh, there's still some repetition, but not as much as the earlier tracks. It's a bit better overall, feels like the energy is finally picking up a bit. Okay, so finally we get to Wavy Navy University featuring V's um, and this is where the album starts to feel a bit more alive and um, the feature from V's is, is refreshing, he definitely added some flavor. Um, this was probably the best track up to this point. After Rubber Band Man, I was relieved to hear something decent again. Um, then watching my page, w watching my page follows and it's alright, not quite on the same level as Wavy Navy University, but still a solid track. Um, nothing gro groundbreaking, but it's fine. Um, now here's where the album really peaks with the Delusional featuring Hancho. Um, this one stood out uh, for me. Um, it's more melodic and I actually really enjoyed it. It's different from the rest, which was super refreshing by this point. Hancho's feature was solid and the song just felt more thought uh, overall. Unfortunately, um, after that we start to see a dip again. Cherish featuring DJ Esco isn't bad, it's decent, but it's nothing. It's not doing anything that stands out either. Um, flows aren't repetitive, so that's a plus, but it just, I mean, it's just a, an okay track. Um, then we hit the second half of the album, and man, I mean, this part just just doesn't live up to what we what we heard earlier. The songs here are mostly skippable. The repetition creeps back in, and even though there are a ton of features, none of them are really bringing anything new to the table. Um, take the track 246 with G Herbo, um, super short song, and honestly more of the same. Nothing exciting, just kind of there. Um, by the time we get to the last few songs, it's like we, they're just like fillers. Um, but I'd give a shout out to Legacy. It has a decent feature and it stands out a bit in the, in this final stretch. Um, the last song, "The Vault Is Yours," is one of the better ones from the back half. But again, it's not, it's not, it's still not at the high level we saw uh, earlier in the in the album. Overall, this album feels way too long and the repetition is just exhausting, it's predictable and while there are a few highlights and a little diversity here and there, it's still kind of one-dimensional. Um, if this album had been shorter and cut out uh, some of the weaker tracks, it could have been a lot, uh, a lot stronger. Um, that said, um, there's definitely room for growth and that's encouraging. Uh, Babyface Ray has some good moments here and I think he's capable of more, he just didn't fully deliver this time around. 
Okay, so let's just uh, jump straight to the ratings. Um, let's start with the performance. For me, it's a 50. So Babyface Ray definitely shows that he has potential, but honestly, he's still relying too much on, on features throughout the, this, this whole project. Um, the flows are very predictable overall and, and repetitive. That really holds him back here. Um, however, there were moments where he found some good form, like on Delusional and Waving Epic University, and you can tell that if he builds on these flashes of brilliance, and he could become a more complete artist. But overall, his performance was just average, it never really reached that next level. Okay, so when it comes to the lyrics, it's not great, it's a 40 for me. Babyface Ray leans to way too much on repetitive lines in a lot of songs, which um, kind of drags the whole album down. There are some bright spots though, um, especially when when he goes for a more melodic style. Um, that was refreshing and felt like an improvement, but it didn't happen often enough to really lift the whole project. Um, at times, the rigs and beats didn't blend too well either, um, which made some tracks feel disjointed. Um, so yeah, lyrically, um, this album is pretty weak. Okay, so now the features, um, there are quite a few on this album and while some of them do help elevate certain tracks, um, shout out to Hancho and Viz, a lot of the features just don't add anything special. Like they're there but they don't change the dynamic of the songs and that makes everything feel kind of stale after a while. Um, if you're gonna have these many features, uh, they need to bring something fresh to the table and that just didn't happen consistently. Um, this part is getting a 45 from me. Okay, so on the production side, I'm giving it a 45. The beats aren't terrible, but they're way too predictable. It's like you already know where the song is going to, to go before it even gets there. Um, that that kind of takes the excitement out of the experience. Plus, um, the repetitive nature of the beats makes the album um, feel long and tiring in some parts. There were a tr there were a few tracks where the production stood out, but overall it was just it, it was just too safe and formulaic. And finally, we have replayability. I'm giving it a 40 because, to be honest, this is an album I'm rushing to play again. Um, there are definitely some skips in here, and a lot of the songs feel too heavy and repetitive to want to go back to. That said, there are a few tracks like Delusional on Wavy Navy University, as I had, as, as I said before, that I wouldn't mind listening to again. But as a whole, it's not an album that demands multiple listens. Um, overall, um, the the score is a is a 44 out of 100. Um, it's not a good album. We didn't really get anything new in here, and the remarkable part of the project is really only about five songs long which just isn't enough for an album that's supposed to keep you engaged. Babyface Ray is, is consistent, sure, but that consistency is way too homogeneous. Um, it ends up being tiring for the listener, and that's why the score lands where it does. Um, there's room for improvement, though, and I think Ray can definitely grow from here if, if he leans into the moments that worked.